let me start by recognizing the chair of the governing council of the University of Limpopo, the vice chancellor of the university, members of the council, senior academics here present, the clergy who are here present, the students and other distinguished guests, and the family of the late Abraham Tiro for inviting me on this eighth day of the month of December 2017 to deliver the fifth memorial lecture. And it is also fitting that in absentia, I should acknowledge the men who have had the honor and privilege of delivering the previous memorial lectures. It gladdens my heart that today we are assembled here to remember a young man whose life was cut short on the first day of February 1974 at the tender age of 29 years. I remember in that year, 1974, I was age 12, and I was a standard seven student, and in the month of December, I heard about Tiro for the first time. It is not worthy as we remember Tiro today and as we celebrate him, uh, that his life is marked by several monumental milestones. In 1945, the year of his birth, the international community sat down in San Francisco in the United States of America to create the United States Organization. At that time, almost all African countries were under the colonial yoke, except Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Ethiopia. Three years later, those of you who will remember under the patronage of Hendrik Fafut, the most pernicious regimes of color differentiation amongst men was instituted in this country. You will also remember that at that time, the international community was already beginning to recognize that the entire colonial project was a project that was inimical to human civilization. We will remember that a few years, in 1957, the great Ghanaian, the Osagie for Kwame Nukuruma, speaking on the day of the independence of Ghana was as passionate as he was eloquent in saying that Africa had to seek first the political kingdom and the rest would be given unto them. Unfortunately, we sought and obtained the political kingdom, but there is still a debate as to whether the rest has been given unto us or whether we have used our capacity to give us the rest. So today we are gathered here to commemorate a young man whose life was cut short in the most brutal manner that any man can die. For the family, the video merely awakens old memories, and perhaps it is a day to mourn again. But the question that one must ask, 
are men like Tiro to be mourned? And my submission is that such men are never mourned. Such men are celebrated. Such men never die. It is the great Mahatma Gandhi who said several years ago, when he was confronting the colonial powers, that they may torture your body, even take away your life, but they can never kill your ideas. That is why today we are able to say is that old soldiers never die. And such a soldier is Abraham Tiro, in whose memory we are here present. But this land of South Africa is also a land of other great people. And therefore, when we are assembled here today, we must remember those others who are his comrades in arms. We must remind ourselves that this land has given us great leaders, such as the great Albert Lutuli. We must remember them today. We must remember that this land has given us great leaders such as Nelson Mandela. We must remember them today. We must also remind ourselves that this is a land that has given us leaders such as Bantu Stephen Biko and Chris Hani and Albertina Sisulu and Walter Sisulu and Ahmed Katrada and many other leaders who have served the world. We must remember that today. We must also remember that the others who are still alive and well, we must remember and celebrate men and women such as Desmond Mpilo Tutu. We must remember them today because the work that was started by the likes of Abraham Tiro is the work that they continued in the realization that the struggle against evil is a relay race where one generation passes over the torch to another generation. We must ask ourselves, however, now that we are celebrating Tiro, did he die in vain? When on that 29th day of April in the year 1972, aged only 27, young men and women in his student council asked him to deliver a speech at the University of the North. He touched things that were way beyond his age. He interrogated his audience on that day. He asked them, this education system that you are giving us, does the world know the differentiation of education, he posed. He asked his audience on that day, in the United States of America, do they have education for the Negroes? Do they have education for the American Indians? Do they have education for the Caucasians? Why is it that in this country we have education for the Bantus? Why is it that we have education for the Caucasians? He posed the question. His audience did not take it kindly. Several years down the line, those questions are valid. Those of us who are familiar with the structures of pernicious regimes such as the apartheid regime, may very well say that in the 1990s, you South Africans, with the assistance of the rest of Africa, succeeded in exorcising the ghost of apartheid. But is there a possibility that apartheid is still alive and well in other forms? Is there a possibility that apartheid is still alive and well? Is there a possibility that those desires of Tiro and other comrades in arms has never been met? Is there a possibility that the education that we provide in South Africa is not uniform? Is there a possibility that we still have apartheid in our education, not only in South Africa, but in the rest of Africa? 
Is there a possibility that we still have apartheid in our hospitals? Is there a possibility? Is there a possibility that we still have apartheid in our public sector? Is there such a possibility? Is there a possibility that we still have apartheid in our economic sector? Is it possible that we never succeeded in exercising these ghosts? Is there a possibility that indeed Tiro was right in posing the question, do we have a fair deal? Do we have a fair deal for the young men and women who are in Port Elizabeth? Do they have a fair deal? Is there a fair deal for those who are mass massacred in Marikana? Is there a fair deal for those who are working in the farms in the Western Corp? Is there a, a fair deal for the blacks who are in the Orange fair, uh, Free State? Is there a fair deal for South Africans several years after Tiro was taken by his maker? In other words, when we are assembled here today, Tiro poses several questions to us. And those questions are not only valid to the South Africans who are here present, those questions are valid to the entire continent of Africa. Because the entire continent of Africa, of Africa continues to punch below a political and economic weight. This continent, this continent of Kwame Nukuruma, this continent of Julius Kambarage Nyerere, this continent of Patrice Emery Lumumba, this continent of Modibo Keita of Mali, this continent of Albertina Sisulu, this continent still knows pain. This continent still knows hunger and famine. This continent still knows conflict. This continent still knows discrimination. This continent still knows underdevelopment. This continent is not at ease. And if you want to know that this continent is not at ease, you only have to look at each one of the African countries and pose the question that Tiro posed several years ago. You pose to you, South Africans, do you have a fair deal? Do the men and women who are working in your factories, treat, are they treated fairly? We know you have made some strides, but is that the best you can do, Tiro would ask. Do you have a fair deal? If Tiro today were to arise and he were to go to Zimbabwe, he would ask of Robert Gabriel Mugabe, do your people have a fair deal, Tiro would ask. Tiro would go to Mozambique and he would ask in Maputo, do you Mozambicans have a fair deal? And he would move before he goes to other African countries, he would go to Lesotho and Swaziland and ask them, do you have a fair deal? And he would not stop there. He would go to Namibia and ask of the president and the people of Namibia, do you have a fair deal? He would go to Angola and ask them, we know you have oil in Angola. Is it for the benefit of the Angolans or the Portuguese? He would not stop there. He would move a little to Equatorial Guinea and ask them, we know that you have the highest per capita income in Africa, but is that per capita income the result of voodoo economics where it is concentrated only in the hands of a few? He would ask, and he would not stop there. He would go to Malawi and Zambia and he would ask. <laughs> Tiro would not stop there because on the 29th day of April, the year 1972, he asked, what is the value of education if it is not con connected with the rest of Africa? He would not stop there. He would go to the Democratic Republic of Congo and ask of Joseph Kabila, you country whom God has given everything in the world, why are you presiding over a country that is the poorest country in Africa where rape is alive and well, he would ask. And he would not stop there. Tiro would go upstairs and he would go to Tanzania and would go to Kenya 
and he would go to Somalia, and he would go to Ethiopia, and he would go to South Sudan, and he would go to the Sudan, and to Egypt, and to Libya, and Tunisia, and Niger, and Central African Republic, and he would go to Gabon, and he would go to Benin, and to Togo, and to Guinea, and to Guinea-Bissau, and to all the countries, and he would pose the same question. And he would not stop there. He would go to Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire and the Gambia and all the African countries and Sierra Leone and Liberia. And he would not stop there. He would go to Mali and Mauritania and Sahrawi and Morocco. And he would pose the same question. So today, when we are assembled here in the memory of a man such as that, the question that we must pose to ourselves are we children of a lesser God? Are we children of a lesser God that endowed with the resources that we have? The dreams of Abraham Tiro have never been satisfied. What will we tell Tiro? You served in the SRC with Tiro. What will you tell him? When his torch was extinguished, have you carried the torch with dignity? You members of his family who lose him and miss him the most, have you kept his torch alive and well? You who knew him through history, have you kept his spirit alive? You who loved him, what are you doing to keep the agenda? How many Tiros have been born? Because Tiro never died. Because all soldiers never die. Is his spirit alive and well? Are we doing something about our education that will make Tiro proud? Or we have schools and we are miseducated in those schools? We have hostels, but are they accessible to all of us? We have farms, but do we eat what we deserve? We have young men and women who want to be engaged in gainful employment. Is it possible that the monster of corruption is standing in the way of Abraham Tiro? Is there a possibility that while Tiro tells us to be warriors for truth, we have made lies and greed our creed? Is it possible that we are betraying Tiro Abraham by doing things that we ought not to do? Is it possible that we are giving away our resources for which Tiro died at age 29? Is it possible that we are welcoming visitors in our country whose only desire is to devour us? Is it possible that we are abandoning our houses to men and women whose only agenda is to decimate us? Oh, Tiro, Look at this audience. This audience, this audience of your fellow South Africans, now liberated from the chains of apartheid, when you died, South Africa was not free. On that February day, when you died, Tiro, Nelson Mandela was still at the Robben Islands. So was Walter Sisulu, so was Chris Harney. And there were others like Robert Sobukwe and other great South Africans, they were still there. In the 1990s, your country was liberated. Your country now claims to be free. But Tiro, what are they free from?
Tiro, is it possible that they are free from the chains and the yoke of apartheid, but they have been imprisoned by something else? And if it is true that they have been imprisoned by something else, what is that thing else? Is it their leaders or themselves? Is it possible, Tiro, today that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of both man and God and that we are all in equal guilt? If that is true, is this not the day, therefore, that your spirit must descend upon us? That we must see the things that as a 29-year-old you saw when elders could not see? Is it possible that you came long before your time and the gods had to call you back? But is it possible that your message is now so relevant that you must not only impact upon South Africa but upon Africa? We are assembled here to remember you, Tiro. But remembering you, because I'm told your name means remembering. But what do you remember about Tiro? When we leave this assembly, and we have had several assemblies in memory of Tiro Abraham, are they mere annual jamborees? Or there is something beyond the jamborees? Is this another fifth jamboree to remind ourselves of Tiro? To behold via a documentary how he lived without more? Or this is a day to re-energize ourselves? I'm submitting to us that this is a day to re-energize ourselves. I'm submitting to us that if we are to give meaning to Tiro, we must interrogate our country and our continent. We must ask ourselves, what are we doing to create employment for our young men and women that they may not run away to the United States of America and Europe? We must ask ourselves that question. We must ask ourselves, what are we doing to ensure that our young men and women upon graduation from the universities have opportunities for employment for those who desire to be employed and opportunities for creativity and innovation for those who desire to create and innovate. We must ask ourselves whether we are generating enough funds to ensure that when our young men and women, our old men and women are sick, they have the ability to access medical services which are world class without paying a dime because they have worked hard for it. We must ask of ourselves whether we are producing enough food so that those who are consumers of pap and other associated foods can do so without let and hindrance. We must ask ourselves what is the quality of housing that we are giving to our people. We must ask ourselves what is the kind of infrastructure that we are giving to our people. We must ask ourselves whether we are giving our people the promises that we made to them in the days of apartheid regime. Tiro, the deal will be fair. Tiro, I can tell you, and we must tell ourselves that Africa is beginning to wake up. Our duty is to ensure that Africa continues awake. Because there is no shortage of individuals who are in the business of injecting Africa with anesthetic drugs that they may continue in their slumber. So, Tiro, we must welcome the Chinese in Africa, but we must stop them from raiding our resources. <laughs> Tiro, we must remind ourselves that there are three ways of being at the dinner table. You can be at the dinner table as a diner, as a waiter of food to be eaten. Africans have been at the dinner table as food for too long. Time has come that we must sit at the dinner table of civilization as diners. Tiro, we must remind ourselves that time has come that when our leaders are invited to international gatherings, they are not there merely for photo sessions, 
but as true participants in the agenda of determining what the world is all about. Tiro, we must remind ourselves that when we are in international organizations, we must not only be allowed to sit by dint of tokenism, but we must be substantive participants in the agenda of life. We are not children of a lesser God. We are not children of a lesser God. But we must also remind ourselves that we must apply effort in the things that require effort. We must not be persuaded or we must not allow ourselves to persuade ourselves that without any effort on our part, we can get the things that we desire without work. We must work. There is no voodoo economics. There is no abracadabra and lo and behold, rabbits coming out of hearts. We must remember that the divine instruction was by the sweat of thy brow. Oh, it is not lost on me that we have a bishop here. It is not lost on me that even if one wanted to be spiritual about these things, we must have clarity of mind. Oh, dear bishop, is it not God who said through Elijah, do not waver between two opinions. Choose you now whom you want to serve. Is it not the same God who through Joshua said, Choose you now whether you want to worship the God of the Amorites or the Lord God. As for me and my house, I shall serve the Lord. And I'm saying that one of the ways in which we serve God is by engaging in productive and honest labor. And I'm telling to us that our wealth does not reside in the things I know of many people who are so poor that the only thing that they have is money and things. You and me must allow ourselves to be rich and wealthy in a different way because the last, I searched, the last time I checked, greed can never be satisfied. The last time I checked, those who are greedy is like consuming salty water. The more you consume, the more you thirst and the more you desire. Tiro, we are saying that time has come for Africans to liberate themselves. And I have a report to give to you, Tiro, on this fifth anniversary on which we remember you. There are countries that are beginning to move in a useful direction. Even your own South Africa, despite and in spite all the problems they have, they are still the largest economy in Africa. They are moving in some direction. Our only prayer is that they must continue moving forward even if the pace is slow. Your country is not in a bad place. Tiro, it is not only South Africa that is beginning to see a fair deal. The neighborhood in Botswana is beginning to move in the right direction. We know we have problems in Lesotho and Swaziland, but big brother South Africa will sort out those, Tiro. <laughs> oh, we know, Tiro, that up in the north across the border, in Zimbabwe, they have distinguished themselves as the only country without a currency, but even that we know it shall be solved. <laughs> and Tiro, the story is not only good in the southern part of Africa, in the eastern part of Africa, my own country, Kenya, is not doing too badly. She has her own adolescent tantrum, but she'll soon settle down. <laughs> And Tanzania and Ethiopia and Rwanda and Uganda are not doing badly either. In the West, Ghana and Nigeria are also doing well, reasonably well. And Cote d'Ivoire is also doing reasonably well. Sudan has a problem and Central African Republic. But we are asking the African Union to wake up. And we are the ones who will wake her up because she's been a sleeping dog for too long. And it is your spirit that will make us wake, make her wake up. So, Tiro, today, when we remember you, you who are born and died young, when, you, when we remember you, you who are born and died violently, you died a good death. 
For history has shown us that the man whom God loves die violently. Did Christ not die violently? Did the great Mahatma Gandhi not die violently? Did Nkrumah not die in great pain? You died the death of brave men. And that is why you never die. So Tiro today, we are here to give meaning to what the South Africans sometimes shout about without much thought. We are here to give meaning to the shout Amandla that Amandla may have a suitable response. Amandla! Maibuye! Maibuye! Amandla! Amandla! Tiro is an old soldier who will never die. Amandla! Maibuye! Thank you.